I will support that legislation because I would sign it if it gets to my desk. The, and we issued a statement today. The President of the United States can't advance legislation. Congress does. I can only support it, promote it, and sign it. But people went nuts saying the headline, uh, Romney and Cain did not sign SBA pledge, pro-life pledge. I am pro-life from the beginning, from conception. Do not believe in abortion. But they didn't consider that small request or point of clarification good enough. So they threw me under the bus. Yes? Did uh, the Susan B. Anthony Association respond to your request? Because I... I'm suspecting, as an attorney, that the problem being the word advance is your use of the word advance is from a legal legislative perspective. Right. And the Susan B. Anthony's use, word, uh, use of the word advance is from a layman's term, meaning right. to support. Right. Or to to uh, actively support. Right. Right. And Good so, point. Um, I'm curious then, did they respond? I don't have an answer to that. I don't have an answer to that question. Because I think that is a valid response yes. for you to have question with yes. that. And, and it is a constitutional issue. Exactly. But we, we have to have clarity. Is this yes. a word of art being used in, in the style of a jargon? Very or is this point. a layman's term? We will, I will follow up on that, but I don't have the answer to that question. But you see my point in terms of what I had issued with. Now, we did release a statement today, if you all have not received it. Uh, Ellen Carmichael, who's in the back. You all know Ellen. She can provide or email you a copy of it where I clearly say I would support and sign the legislation as President of the United States. So, if y'all see some of this other stuff lying around out there, I wanted to set the record straight. Now, now that I've gotten that off my chest, what do y'all want to talk about? <laughs> yes, sir. There's been uh, some statements from Ron Paul supporters mainly. Uh, expressing concern about your uh, your position on auditing the Federal Reserve yes, sir. and your your past experience as a member of a Federal Reserve Board right. of Governors. Right. And uh, just wonder if you could comment on that. I'd be happy. I'd be happy to. Representative Paul wrote a book called In the Fed. I believe we can fix the Fed. Because when I asked the Ron Paul people, what would you replace it with, they don't have an answer. When I was on the board of the Federal Reserve in the 90s, we didn't do the stuff that the Federal Reserve Bank is doing today. We, wouldn't, we never even discussed doing that kind of stuff. So the Federal Reserve today is not the Federal Reserve that I have known for decades prior to this recent decade in terms of controlling monetary policy and controlling inflation. The reason the Fed is in, inflating our money is because of two reasons, which we didn't have to deal with as much. Number one, the national debt, $14 trillion. Number two, if foreign countries don't buy those treasury notes when they need to be sold in order for the treasury to pay the bills, the Federal Reserve is backstopping and buying the treasury notes. I don't agree with that. And so my point, and the other thing is, the Federal Reserve has in this mission to do two things, and it ought to have in this mission to do just one. They're supposed to control inflation, and they're supposed to control unemployment. That's like trying to hit two targets with one bullet or one arrow. Can't be done. Can't be done. So, now, as far as auditing the Fed, in the vernacular of my grandfather, I does not care. But what Herman Cain has said is, it's not going to be one of my top issues. My top issues start with the economy, entitlement spending, energy, immigration, foreign policy, moral issues, deficiency of leadership. If members of Congress were to get together and bring me legislation to audit the Fed, I'd sign it. But I don't have a problem with it. Now, that being said, 
You don't need the president to sign a bill to audit the Fed. Representative Paul sits on a committee that already has that authority. Now, I'm not mad at y'all. <laughs> it's just that this has been a recurring question. And some people, I don't know who, I don't have time to track it, keep trying to say that I object to audit and fed. No, I do not. It's just that it's not going to be one of Herman Cain's lead issues. Yes? As someone who's worked for the Fed, what would we actually hope to achieve by auditing the Fed anyway? Some people, I believe, think that there's some sort of smoking gun or some sort of secrecy that the public does not know that goes on behind those closed doors. And the reason that is not one of my big issues is I don't think they're going to find anything. I know that the internal controls of the Federal Reserve are as tight as a drum. That's what I learned serving on the Federal Reserve Board for five years. Because I used to get sick of sitting there listening to all of the control reports because they can get rather dry. The internal controls far outweigh anything that's going to be found in an audit, in my opinion. But some people interpret that, that I want to protect the Federal Reserve. No, I don't. So I don't know what they think that they're going to find. My position on the Fed is we need to fix it and tighten up its mission such that it will not have the discretion to do some of the things that it is now doing that's deflating the dollar. Yes, sir. Let's talk about foreign policy for a moment. Well, yep. What would a Herman Cain presidency look like when it comes to issues like Libya and now evidently Syria? Right. My approach to foreign policy will start with answering the fundamental question. Who are our friends and who are our enemies? I don't think most of the American people have a good idea about that. We have an idea about some. Look at the recent situation with Pakistan. When Osama bin Laden was taken out. We thought Pakistan was our friend. They have arrested the people who worked with our intelligence, intelligence people to know where bin Laden was. Would your friends do that? Or would your enemies do that? That's the first question we must answer. Secondly, what is our, what is in the strategic interest of the United States of America for every country out there? So, number one, who are our friends and who are our enemies? Number two, what is our relationship with them and what's in the strategic interest of the United States of America? Another example. Uh, Pakistan, I got questions about. Uh, Israel, I don't have questions about. Uh, I made the statement in New Orleans yesterday, and uh, a lot of people cheered. And I even got some people who booed. They don't like Israel. Well, fine. And the statement that I made was, if you mess with the United States of America, uh, pardon, if you mess with Israel, you're messing with the United States of America. That's how strongly I feel about that relationship. Because I happen to believe that President Obama threw Israel under the bus a few weeks ago when Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was coming over here. And I had a, I had a, I was on a TV program and it might have been Lou Dobbs who asked me, did you think that uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was being rude as he sat there and chastised President Obama? I said, rude? No! I think Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was well within his right to chew out President Obama for throwing him under the bus two days before a visit. I'm not mad at y'all. <laughs> the gentleman is pumping y'all, okay? That's all this is. That's all this is. Now, so, to finish the rest of it, that's more about our relationship with every country out there that I don't know than I know. And so my approach is, number one, I'm going to depend upon the people who know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. But I will develop a foreign policy strategy with every nation that we have any kind of relationship at all, good or bad, friend or foe. That's my approach. It's a business approach. You don't go and 
um, enter a new market with a product until you properly assess the market, properly assess the likelihood of success and failure. So I've got a lot of work to do in that area. A lot of work to do in that area. Can I talk about, the, uh, about the Muslim thing that you mentioned before? What Where, exact, wait, 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 wait. What, what, did I just answer that? No, no, you didn't. What exact special precautions would you use? I did. And how do you know if the special precautions would okay. work or not? If you're trying to make me lose my cool, you're almost succeeding. <laughs> I, I mean, it's, that, it's a confusing statement. No, no. I never said I would use any special precautions. Okay. So a Muslim applies to be in the administration, gets in like anybody else. Yes. Okay. I never used those words. No. Those words were used by somebody on the internet. Okay? <laughs> now. Thanks. What is your short Now, wait a minute. Let me say this, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it probably wasn't politically correct to raise my voice. <laughs> but you know what? It's resonating with the American people. I'm going to be myself. I'm not going to be a punching bag, okay? But you can imagine that I've been asked that same question 18,000 times. <laughs> I never said that. Okay. Yes, sir. What is your? So I apologize. I apologize.